kids are not eco-friendly. One less baby helps the planet more than giving up meat or car. You may have seen this internet narrative meme recently, and it's been repeated in several forms online. And they all claim that this is based on a scientific study. So I thought it would be interesting to root out where this article actually came from. You'd be surprised to know that this is actually from 2017. The climate mitigation gap, education and government recommendations miss the most effective individual actions. Written by Seth Wines and Kimberly Nichols. We recommend four widely applicable high impact, i.e. low emissions actions with the potential to contribute to systemic change that's a buzzword phrase, systemic change, and substantially reduce annual personal emissions. Recommendation number one, having one fewer child reduces CO2 emissions for, per year. Though adolescents poised to establish lifelong patterns are an important target group for promoting high impact actions, we find that 10 high school science textbooks from Canada largely fail to mention these actions instead of focusing on incremental changes with much smaller potential emission reductions. Basically they're saying recycling is not as effective as having fewer children. We conclude that there are opportunities to improve existing educational and communication structures to promote the most effective emission reduction strategies and close this mitigation gap. Now let's take a look at this little video here. Hi, I'm here with Seth Wines, a PhD student at the University of British Columbia. He's interested in studying how an individual can mitigate the problem of climate change. So Seth, how did you get onto this topic? So I was a high school science teacher, and I've had a lot of conversations with students about climate change. So this is a student who wrote this paper. So you see something cited as a study on the internet. What's the source? This scrawny little kid. His partner in this study, Kimberly Nicholas, was apparently his mentor. Professor Kimberly Nicholas is a sustainability scientist at Lund University in Sweden. She has published over 55 articles on climate and sustainability in leading peer-reviewed journals, writes for such publications as Elle, The Guardian, Scientific American, and New Scientist. You remember how scientific Scientific American is these days. They endorsed Joe Biden for the presidency in 2020. And that is the crucial distinction here. Are we dealing with science or are we dealing with politics? She's a best-selling author. Born and raised on her family's vineyard in Sonoma, California, she studied the effects of climate change on the California wine industry. How nice to be at the top and observe the peons far down below. They all look like ants, don't they? She gives lectures and moderates at about 75 international meetings and organizations each year across public policy, civil society, arts and culture, the wine industry, foundations, and academia. Recent engagements have included keynotes for Stanford Founders Circle, donors who have given over $1 million to the university, the Swedish Association of Museums, and live-streamed events for thousands of people, such as the launch of a new European Union climate action program, and as a featured guest on a New Scientist webinar. Not really a lot of time in her schedule to do actual hard science, it would seem. Advocacy seems to be her full-time job, and it pays very well. Let's look at how student Seth Wines is doing six years later from his 2017 paper. A little bit older, perhaps not, if not wiser. He sends tweets from his account. Let's take a look. Seth Wines offers climate solutions. That's good. You're hungry? Okay, we'll make lunch soon. I'm just reading about how to have less children so I don't have to feed them anything. Seth Wines, climate solutions, low carbon, carbon transport, policy, and politics. Well, at least he's honest there. Here's his most recent tweet. Humanity has caused global temperatures to increase by 1.25 degrees Celsius, and we are on track for hitting 1.5 degrees Celsius in less than 10 years. Given this prognosis, what is the outlook for hitting our Paris Climate Accord goals? He's currently a student. I'm a postdoc studying 
climate change mitigation at Concordia University. So a student is lecturing the rest of us on how to live. Now, if you're an astute person, you may already be asking the most basic question. If these two scientists advocate having less children, did they have any children themselves? Having a, a spouse or children as achievements is so old-fashioned, so you're never going to find out details like that on their own biography pages. Did they actually follow their own advice? We won't know, because they'll never tell you if they have spouses, children, or spousal equivalents. This translates to billions of dollars, money pulled out of your wallet and your paycheck when the government listens to activists such as Seth and his mentor here, Professor Nicholas. Nothing is ever debated. Nothing is ever discussed. The money has to flow to their causes because science is indisputable. Science is never debated in 2023. Science is never discussed. There's no arguing. You must agree with their premise that there are too many people in the world. This almost sounds like something out of the 20th century. Oh, that's right. In the 20th century, global communism used AK-47s and brutal revolutions to convince the world that communist, progressive, leftist socialism was the way of the future. And when people disagreed, communists filled the fields with killing fields, mass graveyards. Because if you disagreed with a communist, they told you the science was settled in the 20th century, and they murdered you, your family, and in fact, they murdered all the academics, just like these two here. What happened to communism of the 20th century? Well, they rebranded. They took off the lapel pin of the hammer and sickle of international communism and they put on the lapel pin of Echo Warrior Green Environmentalism. Same communists, new tactics in the 21st century. And no one can argue and debate with them. The politics are settled, and if the politics aren't settled, they'll tell you who to vote for. If this sounds a bit Malthusian, you're not wrong. A few of us are endeavoring to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of war. Why? Because it is at Christmas time that want is most keenly felt, and abundance rejoices. Uh, what life would you do? Huh. Nothing. No. You wish to be anonymous. I wish to be left alone. Since you ask me what I wish, sir, that is my answer. I help to support the establishments I have mentioned. Those who are badly off must go there. Many can't. Some would rather die. If they would rather die, they'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. Who is it that is saying we need the people to die off to make a better world? It's these scientists here. Perpetual students, lifelong students, none of these people produce anything. Yet they force policy changes on our government which cost billions, possibly trillions of dollars, to meet all of their dire recommendations. They wish to control who gets to have the children. You can already answer that question of who gets to have children, and who will have their population curtailed by those who know better. When you see when you see an internet meme like this, and ask yourself, who is it that's telling you to live your life on their terms? It's not Donald Trump, and it's not conservatism. It is arrogant leftist elites of the Democratic Party who wish to order you how to live your life and what kind of family you are permitted to have. Whatever this is, it's not science, and it's certainly not settled, unless you choose not to speak up. Thank you.